Sparks are an extra class added in the Shen's last gift DLC. They're an interesting mix of the base game's classes, focusing on tanking and dealing damage. A lot of people say that Sparks aren't viable, or that other classes fill the same role better. While Sparks don't have a lot of health in the late game, and are quite expensive to build and upgrade, the amount of damage they can occasionally put out is pretty amazing. I always try to have a spark in my squad. I guess I just like giant robots too much. While most classes have a weapon attachment that's just a no-brainer, sparks have a very specific setup that I use in order to get the most out of them. First and foremost, you need an expanded magazine. Overdrive, the spark's main ability, is not nearly as good if you run out of ammo. Next up, you want a hair trigger. Hair trigger has a chance to proc every time you fire, so classes that shoot multiple times in a turn are more likely to proc it. Finally, a scope is always great. I use a mod that makes sparks benefit from cannon breakthroughs, allowing them to eventually equip three attachments. If you didn't have any of those, you could use a stock to make up for missed shots, but those are the three that you should be aiming for. Sparks can only equip heavy weapons. I think either the rocket launcher or shredder gun are good choices. I usually go for the shredder, for damage, and because it combines with an ability we'll talk about soon. The sparks ability branches are future combat and war machine. Future combat focusing mostly on the tanky abilities, and war machine on damage output. Sparks actually get several base abilities, some shared with the base classes. There's Shredder, which is identical to the Grenadier's ability at Corporal. This lets you shred armor with your cannon attacks, which is always a strong ability when dealing with the tougher enemies. They also get the same remote hack that specialists have, allowing them to hack objectives from a distance. In this case, the spark is worse though, because their hack stat is much lower than specialists. You can complete objectives, but you're very unlikely to get any bonus rewards with a spark. For unique abilities, they have a couple passives. One is just that they can carry a heavy weapon. The other is mechanical chassis. The description for this just says that it's immune to fire and poison effects. However, what it actually means is, it's a robot, and there are a lot of other little benefits to unpack. The most obvious thing is that they can't take cover. Instead, they have a natural defense value of 15, which is 5 less than someone in half cover. This means that most enemies will always shoot at the spark if they can see it. You can boost this using a specialist's aid protocol though, to bring it almost in line with full cover. And because they can't take cover, they can never be flanked or exposed for increased crit chances. Another benefit is that sparks can leap up to high ground from almost any position, they don't need stairs, ladders, or a grapple. This means as long as there's high ground, sparks can always get easy elevation bonuses. Sparks can't get any negative mental effects whatsoever. Panic, disorientation, even mind control, sparks are completely immune to it. This makes them good against psionic enemies like sectoids and advent priests, and fantastic against the warlock. Unfortunately, they can still be stunned by enemies like the stun lancer, it's just that the effect is called shutdown instead. Finally, they also handle injuries differently to regular soldiers. They can't be healed by medikits, they have their own unlockable ability for repairing themselves and other sparks during missions. They also don't have any bleeding out state, so if a spark hits 0 HP then it's gone for good. When sparks return damaged from a mission, they go into a slot in the engineering bay. There's only one slot, which means that if you have multiple sparks in need of repair, you have to wait for them one at a time. You can still send them on missions even if they're damaged though, they'll just continue repairing when they get back. With all that out of the way, 
we finally get to the Spark's headline ability, Overdrive. This is an active ability that gives the Spark an extra action point, bringing their total to 3, and makes it so that none of their attacks are turn ending. The catch is that each standard shot adds a minus 15 aim penalty, making repeated shots less and less accurate. This is an incredible ability though, because it allows you to fire 3, or more, times in a single turn, or mix a heavy weapon or other offensive ability in. Most classes are rushing to get to their multi-damage abilities at, or around Colonel rank. Meanwhile the spark gets theirs right out of the gate. The main downside to this ability of course is that, at base, the minus 15 aim penalty is a really huge debuff, that makes it very difficult to get more than two good shots off. You can compensate by hopping up to high ground, but you really want to get one of the next abilities to make overdrive shine. Sparks have their own rank names. Their first rank, Aspirant, has Bulwark, and Adaptive Aim. Bulwark is a passive ability that gives you an additional point of armor, and makes you act as high cover. This ability is nice in concept, but in practice isn't that helpful. While the point of armor is always nice, being full cover is a double-edged sword. Enemies can also use the spark as full cover, but you can just move away to leave them exposed. The bigger problem is that if you put a unit next to the spark, you're just encouraging enemies to use frag grenades instead, which are guaranteed damage against both units, and shred your armor. Even advanced troopers and basic officers get grenades, and there are several enemies throughout the game with area attacks. You definitely can use it, it's just you need to be constantly checking which enemies can, and can't use explosives, which makes it more hassle than it's worth, at least for me. Adaptive aim though, is a passive that removes the aim penalty from overdrive, meaning you can now shoot as many times as you want. This just takes an already strong ability, and removes the only thing really holding it back. Earlier I mentioned that hair triggers have a chance to proc each time you attack. Assuming you have a superior hair trigger, and use all three actions to shoot, this means you roll a 15% chance three times. The chances of you failing all three rolls is roughly 61%, which is pretty good considering you still get three attacks out of it. If you get the continent bonus or resistance order, the chance goes up to 20%, meaning your overall chance to not proc the hair trigger is now only about 51%. 50-50 odds for being able to shoot four times during overdrive is pretty amazing. The next rank, Knight, has Rainmaker and Strike. Rainmaker is a passive that gives you plus two damage to your heavy weapon, and increases its area of effect. Heavy weapons start off powerful, and this ability just pushes them even further. Your standard rocket launcher goes from doing 4 to 7 damage with a 5 tile range, to 6 to 9 damage with a 9 tile range. This is a pretty significant upgrade which makes it much more likely to kill intermediate enemies outright, and makes it easier to hit multiple enemies. For the shredder gun, it increases both the distance and the width of the cone. Making a weapon which was sometimes awkward to use, into something that can pretty reliably hit as many enemies as you need it to, and deal massive damage. Overall it's a very strong contender at this rank. Strike is an active ability that lets you move to an enemy and punch them, with a 4 turn cooldown. It starts at 7 damage with basic armor, and increases to 9 and 11 as you upgrade your armor. Strike is very similar to the Ranger's Slash ability, you can use it on a dash and it ignores cover. It can be quite useful in overdrive chains, allowing you to both close the distance and attack in one action. However, if you didn't take adaptive aim, then it also suffers aim penalties from overdrive, though it doesn't increase them itself. Another thing worth mentioning is that this puts you right next to enemies, so if you took bulwark then they'll end up with full cover. You can kind of deal with this by only taking diagonal tiles, 
but this is just one more thing you have to consider because of bulwark. It's a fairly solid ability, it's just that it has the same problem as slash, that moving towards enemies means you're also likely to reveal additional pods. Unlike the ranger though, the spark doesn't really care that it might not have cover. Rank 3, Cavalier, gets Intimidate and Wrecking Ball. Intimidate is a passive that gives a chance for enemies to panic when attacking the spark. The calculation is a little complicated, but it ends up around 25% for most enemies, as long as you have the right armor. A lot of the basic enemies in the game have a similar will stat, varying between 50 and 75 depending on how late in the game you are. For sectoids and other late game enemies though, their will stat is too high for intimidate to work. Also, certain special enemies like the chosen are just completely immune to panic. While it's not something you can rely on, especially since it requires an enemy to attack the spark first, it's not an awful fallback. Wrecking Ball is a passive ability that, while overdrive is active, allows sparks to smash through walls while moving. On PC, you can hold control to set waypoints, allowing you to set a specific route. This means you can destroy a lot of the enemy's cover in just a few actions. It also combines with Strike, allowing you to smash a hole in a wall while you move to punch something. This is essentially another source of renewable cover destruction. With clever waypointing you can destroy multiple enemies cover in one or two actions and still be able to shoot. The only downside is that unless you have Strike, you have to give up an attack to make use of it. The 4th rank, Vanguard, unlocks Repair, and Bombard. Repair is the only way a spark can regain health during a mission. It's an active ability that sends the bit to repair 6 HP, it's not turn ending, and it has 2 charges. Despite the in-game description, Repair will always heal for 6 HP and always has 2 charges. Otherwise it functions similarly to the specialist's medical protocol, just for sparks. There's not much else to mention, other than that it doesn't affect repair times back on the Avenger. The Bombard is an active ability that launches the bit as an area of effect attack. It starts with 3 to 4 damage, and increases to 5 to 6 and 7 to 8 with bit to year. It has a 5 tile area, it destroys cover, and you get 1 charge per mission. It's interesting in that it isn't blocked by terrain and it doesn't have any range limits. You throw it straight up and it comes straight down on a target, even if it's indoors, and even if the spark can't directly see it. The only things you need to keep in mind are that you need a unit that can see it, similar to squad sight, and it doesn't do any shredding at all. This is just a really nice move if you need to hit a target and have no other means to do it. The spark can just toss this out as a last resort, when most other classes might not be in a position to help. Next, at Paladin, you get Channeling Field and Hunter Protocol. Channeling Field is a passive that gives you plus one damage to your next shot each time the spark is attacked. This bonus resets when you shoot, and the attack doesn't have to hit for you to get the bonus. Like most reactive abilities, the problem is that you need the enemy to attack the spark in order for you to get the benefit from this. Since you're usually trying to kill them as fast as possible, this makes this ability a bit situational. Worse, plus one damage for each attack is pretty pathetic. In order for you to get any benefit out of this, especially in the late game when enemies have a lot of HP, you need to be getting shot at a lot. I can't really think of a situation where this ability would be very helpful, at least in the base game. Hunter Protocol on the other hand is probably my favorite ability in the game, at least from an entertainment standpoint. It's a passive ability that gives you a 33% chance, for enemy, to take a reaction shot when they activate. This is somewhat comparable to Guardian on Specialists, in that there's no upper limit, 
and you usually have it happen as part of an ambush. Unlike Guardian though, this is completely passive and the only condition is the 33% chance. This can lead to some truly hilarious moments where your spark suddenly unloads on a pod without you expecting it. A fringe benefit is that this makes sparks semi-decent scouts if you don't have any concealed units left. If your spark runs into a pod, then there's a good chance you'll get at least one shot off. Meaning that you get to both move and attack in one action, and the rest of your squad has all their actions remaining. This is just a fantastic ability. It's just free damage that always has a chance of happening whenever you activate a pod. Finally, at Champion, you have Sacrifice and Nova. Sacrifice is an active ability where you move to a spot and create a field that attracts enemy attacks. While active, you get plus 2 armor and plus 20 defense, and it covers a roughly 8 tile area. It has a 3 turn cooldown, and it's a turn ending action. This is the final step in tank builds, the ability to take damage for your other units. This actually combines fairly well with channeling field, allowing you to soak up a bunch of damage for a strong attack. You can even throw a specialist's aid protocol on top for a total of 55 defense, which means a basic enemy with 65 aim will only have a 10% chance to hit you. There's actually a hidden benefit where the defense stat of protected units is adjusted based on the spark's value. This means that even if you have units stood completely out in the open, they still get the same 35 defense that the spark has. At this point in the game, with powered armor, sacrifice will bring your total to 5 or 6, depending on if you took bulwark. This is a pretty significant damage reduction, but you can never go below 1 damage, so you're still dependent on the defense boost to avoid being hit. Finally, as always, positioning your units close together to benefit from this encourages area attacks like grenades. While the spark is guaranteed to take damage, the other units being protected by sacrifice won't take any. It's actually a pretty decent ability, it's just that the area isn't that big, and sparks don't have a lot of health in the late game. Nova is an active ability that deals 6 damage in a 5 tile range around you. It's a free action with no cooldown or charges, but it starts dealing self damage if you keep using it. It starts at 0 damage, and increases by 2 each time you use it. If you only ever use it once or twice in a mission, then this is just an extra bit of free damage whenever you're close to enemies. It's particularly good against melee enemies that try to surround you, or if you took strike then you can use it as a follow up during overdrive chains. It even ignores armor, so it's always useful. At the end of the day, free damage is hard to pass up. For me, I like to take adaptive aim, rainmaker, intimidate, bombard, hunter protocol, and nova. You could argue for Wrecking Ball instead of Intimidate, but I just never found myself using it, whereas I do occasionally get shot at. This setup is mostly built around maximizing overdrive and stacking damage. Just pre-position your spark in high ground, hopefully proc Hunter Protocol, and then activate overdrive and unload. <laughs> 